What's up on my Power Ass crew? Today, guess why it broke? At your lower turn signal stock that sticks out of the left side of your column, the operation windshield wipers and your turn signals and all that stuff. I was in my 91 here and I pushed down on it. Next thing I know, I heard thump. Look at the floorboard, it just fell off. See right there, you can see what's broken. And right there is the rest of it. So since I've got it on the end of a drill bit, what do you think the video's about today? That's right. I'm going to show you guys how to extract that thing out of your column without taking your steering column apart. Much easier this way. You just got to have a steady hand and a little bit of patience. So if it's the first time you guys land on Power Axe YouTube channel, I do DIY videos. Show you guys how to repair your Jeeps, your cars, your motorcycles so it will save you money and the pride of doing it yourself. So if that's something you could be interested in, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. Alright, let's get on with this. Before we get to the demonstration of how to drill out the old broken piece, I want to show you guys how this is really supposed to work. Alright, so I want to show you guys how to remove and reinstall this. Let's just say, for instance, you want to, your old one has no lettering left on it. It's all worn out. It's just solid black. You've got your arrows here to indicate your, you know, for your highs and lows. And your lettering here for your squirters and all that fun stuff. And you twist this for your wipers. But let's just say all your lettering's worn out and you want a new one and you want to install it to make everything look authentic because you're doing a nice restoration or whatever the case may be. Here's what you do. It's super simple. Come around here. Simply grab the stock. Be sure that you're not, this rotation of this right here is very important, okay? You want this to where, this is where you turn your wipers for your high, low delays, whatever the case may be. Look right here, you got the zero mark and then you got a mark here. They're both properly lined up. That's very important. Because if you're like this status or anything through here, you're not gonna be able to pull this stock out. You want it there. So what you wanna do is once you got in that position, simply easily, don't snatch it, pull gently. And these pull right out, there it is. Now as I demonstrated a moment ago, with the whole thing, this having to be in line with that dot, See if the camera picks it up. You see right here up inside there, you see that little notch right there at the end of that? What happens is whenever you rotate this, see this part, okay, so look right here, we got this little tab here, which aligns with here, and you got one that aligns with this right here. So this part stays stationary all the time. It goes up inside here, it stays stationary, lined up with those two keyways but the metal pin itself does not necessarily do that. When it goes up inside there, it lines with that slot back up inside there. And whenever you turn it, this little tab right here twists a switch up inside the, the column. So whenever you turn it, just turn it for it to rotate that switch, what you're also doing is throwing it out of line with that little key slot up inside the right upside there when it's out of line with that key slot you're not gonna be able to pull it out because this is actually hitting you know inside that groove inside there you're not gonna be able to pull it so that's why it's important to have this lined up with that like this right here for you to be able to remove it and also installation same process take that little take this right here this little tab you line it up with the side that little groove inside here don't get hard, don't get rough with it. Gently push it. Okay, see? It slid in just a little bit right there. Now as you insert it in, be sure you line this keyway up here with that slot. And don't get rough with it. Now if this right here slides forward, don't sweat that. You're okay. Don't worry about it quite yet. Don't get rough with it now. Just until you hit that sweet spot, then it slides right in because it lines with that keyway. Now it's important for the sleeve, the outer part, to line up. See how I can slide it right here and it lines right inside that groove? Once you get that like that, you see you got a little bit of a gap here. Hmm, what do you do? Push it right in place, that's all. And there you go, you're all set. And that's how, when everything's not broken, when things are not broken, that's how you install it and it's so much easier. So now I'm gonna pull this back out for demonstrations of what to do if that piece breaks up inside your column. Now before we demonstrate this process in the steering column, I want to go over this with you outside the steering column so at least you can get an idea of what's going on as you're fiddling around up inside the uh, switch in the steering column. 
Now here's the piece right here that, br that breaks. As you can see, it used to be attached to this. Come on camera, focus. It was attached to this right here, and you see that little groove right there? That's where it locks up inside the column, prevent it from pulling out. And you feel like a little de uh, detent. As you push it in, it locks, and you're good. Because here is the one, the good one. As you see, that's how it's supposed to look. So what we're going to do to extract this out of the column, the first thing we're going to do, you use a 16th inch drill bit. Now for the purpose of drilling the hole, I really prefer this style drill bit here that does not have the hex shank on the back side of it. And this for a particular reason, I'll show you guys once we get into the steering column part of it, I'll show you why. You'll take the drill bit and you'll drill out the hole with the 16th inch drill bit. And it does not have to be deep at all. Pull this out. You'll see the depth of it right there. You're looking at probably 3 16 quarter inch, something like that. It does not have to run deep cut because the next tools we're using does not engage deep inside this piece right here anyway. So the next process that we're using, we're going to use a screw extractor. Focus. So the next process we're using is the screw extractor. The screw extractor has a left-handed cutting pattern. Whenever I say left and right hand, what I'm saying, talk, talking about is the top surface of your tool, whether it be we're going to use either this or this. The top surface is either rotating to your left or to your right as I, as I go through this tutorial. So as you see the screw extractor, you see the way the flutes are shaped? I got a bead on my arm. Go away. As you see the uh, flutes, how they're rotating, they're rotating to my left, so the back side right here, looking at it, top surface rotating left. It will turn and bite into that 16th inch hole that you just drilled. And once you do, you can see how I'm using the bit to rotate the broken piece of the shaft. Now, once it uh, engages, what you should do, if this were a bolt, you keep going like right here and you'll back that bolt right out of that you know, threaded area, whether it be a nut or a weld nut or zerk nut or whatever you want to call them, wherever it may be stashed at. But this in particular, you got to find that sweet spot before this is going to pull out. Now remember at the beginning of the video when I showed you guys inside the column of my 91 how it has that slot that it has to line up with whatever you extract this piece this has to be lined up with that slot to come out of the steering column so if you rotate this to a certain point and you're not lined up with that uh, slot you're not going to pull it out it's going to be out of line it's going to be hidden and you can't pull it out but once you rotate it in its proper position get that block in once you get it in its proper position you're between that slot it'll slide right on out of there with a little bit of force because remember you got that spring or detent ball whatever's back there holding that in place to prevent it from falling out of your column basically you do have enough pressure you got to make it bite hard enough to slide past that so in my case when this broke my little pin right here was rotated back and I had to go this way to make it line up and so this obviously is going to be the right tool because it's rotating the wrong way I need it to rotate this way to line up with that groove to come out. So that's where the drill bit came into play. They're using a 564 drill bit, which is one step up from that eighth in my kit. Focus. See right there. And this is where having the hex shank on the back of it actually plays to your favor because then you can use that pair of pliers right there just to grab hold of the shank right here and have good grip to put it in. You'll push, don't push ridiculously hard because you want to break the switch inside the column, but you'll push it hard enough to make that drill bit bite. You do not use the drill bit right now. The only thing you want it to do is those flutes to bite inside that shaft, a broken shaft piece, enough for it to grip and you pull it right out okay so it may be one of those trial and error things you'll try the screw, a screw extractor first this tool right here if it doesn't work you may have to go to a drill bit like it because it needs to rotate a different direction to get that knot to line up with that slot to pull through reading on the forums facebook groups and stuff like that that's one of the biggest problems i've seen is that i might won't do that i won't do that every time i pull it just you know the screw extractor or whatever just pops out of it it's because sometimes this has to be lined up properly 
to slide through this slot. All right, here's what I'm gonna do for you guys. I'm gonna take rust bucket. I'm gonna insert this back inside rust bucket up inside the column. Then I'm gonna show you guys how to extract that out of the column. Now hopefully it cooperates right and I want to take the column apart, but we're about to find out, huh? Now I'd like to add one quick little thing. It can be said that this screw extractor really shouldn't even came into play. In a way that can be true. In most cases, it is absolutely uh, absolutely correct. But in the rare situation that where your stock goes in and it rotates back towards you, like the top of it rotates back toward you, and if the switch just happened to get stuck in that position, that's where this, the rotation of where it, the direction it cuts, would bring it back counterclockwise and allow you to recenter it back up. Otherwise, whenever you're turning this thing, you've got to turn this toward your left, and whenever you're rotating it, it's cutting into that shaft, into the hole that you cut. Whenever you're rotating, it's actually rotating it the wrong way to bring it completely out because it's taking it past where that uh, slot pulls out. So really, the only time you're ever going to need this is in the instance that that particular tab and the slot is lined up and shifted forward, but it's not, it's hung up for whatever reason. It's got a little broken, where it broke off. Maybe it's got a tab hanging up on the plastic or something. That's about the only time you're going to need this right here to rotate it back or probably like one click or something to be able to extract it back out. So, I mean, I just want to throw that in real quick. So there's some people say that you don't need the screw extractor at all because it does turn it the wrong way. But there has been cases to where that tab was clocked this way and hung when it broke. That's where this would come into play and rotate and put it in position so you can pull it out. Just want to throw that in real quick. Okay, here we go. Let's break rust bucket. I've got, I've got the piece on the end of my drill bit here. And if you look beside there, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up from this angle or not, but there's a slot. Web, you got one right here on the outside. There's another one on the inside up inside there. That's where this piece lines up with that slot on the inside. Okay, there's that little bit. Push, and there it is. Oh no, my steering column is broken. My little digital flogy arm is broken. I don't know what to do. Oh no. You like my voices there, huh? Anyway. Now you got this thing in your hand wondering, what the crap? What do I do now? Well, can you fake it? Yeah, you can. You still got turn signals. You can go like this, go like this, and you, know, you have to stick it in there every time. No, don't super glue it, because there's a reason for that too. You can twist this right here and you can get your squirters, which will activate your wipers for a moment. But to turn your wipers on and off, you gotta rotate this piece right here. This is what's broken. As you can see here with the good one, if we hold this right here in place, this right here rotates see that right there it rotates that's what's activating your wipers to turn them on and off and if you're going down the road and it's raining this is the part you want to use yeah you can activate your squirters for a moment which will kick your wipers on for a moment but it's only going to last for like a few wipes and you're done this is the part of the switch to activate your wipers so this is actually right here what's broken so you got no wipers no full-time wipers so here's the case of what the heck do you do so, I don't need this part to set this aside. So this is where I say that I prefer this drill bit over this drill bit in this purpose. Taking your drill, what you want to do is choke up on your bit about that much. I've only got maybe a little over, but probably about five eighths of an inch sticking out or so. That is because you got to accommodate your depth up inside here to get it into the depth of that well what you don't want is your drill bit sticking out so far like it's, it's customary for people to take the drill bit and kind of go about right along in here and it'll be sticking out that far but what you end up getting is a whole lot of the shaft flexing and if it starts doing this number it starts bending the flex and as you're pushing it very gently to drill that hole out it could have, it could actually break the bit off and well here you are you're kind of stuck you have to go buy another bit start all over so if you choke it down a little bit you get less flex in the shaft right there. It's easier to control up inside there. So basically, you're going to get this point. You get up inside here. Okay, is it deep enough? Is it deep enough? Okay, you look at look at your bit. And actually, I need a little bit more depth on this. And once I get the correct depth set, depth set, I'll show you what I'm looking at. 
So I'm touching the end of the broken piece. Look, mm -hmm. Okay, looks good to me. All right, let me change the camera angle. I'll show you what I'm looking at. Okay, right now I've got the end of the bit just touching the end of that broken shaft piece. You see how much of the bit's still sticking out right there? How much of the uh, chuck? That gives you about all the depth you want to drill into that piece to put your screw extractor or your larger drill bit to extract that piece out of there. Again, you go too long, you got too much shaft flex, but if you uh, choke up on too far and you're too short, you're not going to be able to get in there deep enough to get the hole drilled in as deep as you need it. So, I've got where the end of the chuck is, about a quarter inch sticking outside the uh, surface right here. Now, as you drill that hole up inside there, as you drill, which I've already, as you know, I've already got the hole drilled, but this is how much RPMs you want. I mean, very, very, very light and subtle. I mean, you see how slow it's turning. You, you don't want wide open because you're going to have a hard time controlling that bit and walking around. As you're pushing on the end of that broken piece beside there, this bit's going to want to walk right, left, whatever. So what you want is very lightly. You get through a few turns, back off and look. Did it stay center of the rod? Uh, let's see. Because you're looking at the end of the rod as you're drilling it, what you want is for it to stay as close to the middle as you possibly can. What's going to happen when you start drilling it, it's going to want to walk right, left, whatever. And the faster you spin your drill, the more likely it is going to walk. Walk and meaning as it's sliding off one end or another. But when you get up in the middle of it and you turn your RPM slow, you can better control your bit walking off of your part. And I was not putting a lot of pressure on because I ain't going to stab my hand for you. But if you look real close, you can see where the bit was starting to cut into it right there. Now at that point, we're close enough to center that we could continue the drill on through it. If it was way off over here, you don't want to do that because then you're taking the risk. You can see how with the round right there, it steps up. If it was way off center over here, you're taking the risk of your drill bit sliding off and messing up your switch. But if you're, I know that's not center, but I'm close enough to center to make it work. So you gotta drill your 16th inch hole about a quarter inch deep right there and that's all you're gonna need. Now the next step after getting that hole drilled, we're gonna use either the screw extractor or we're gonna use the drill bit, whichever one ends up bringing it out. Now, I wanna give you guys a little bit of a peek up inside here to see what's going on so you can see that groove on how, how things are supposed to line up. I'm hoping the camera focuses on this. There we go, I can, I, through my viewfinder it looks good anyway. Okay, you can see we got the outside groove here but you can also see that inside groove right there. And that's where that tab on that shaft, uh, let me reach for it. Where that tab on that shaft, as you see right there, is lining up with that inside groove. That tab has to be lined up before it's gonna come through that groove right there. So that's what we're after. And there's no way for me to keep this view like this and get the screw extractor beside there to pull that out. So this is where I'm gonna set the camera back on the tripod and you guys use your imagination what you see here and what's on that shaft right there that little flat spot sticking up a little tab sticking up imagine that in your head as we're scratching that out of there where it needs to be okay okay now you guys got a little bit different angle and just imagine like i said the hole drilled inside the piece where the tabs need to line up as we're using our tools to try to extract it now i'm gonna feed my Screw extractor beside there, make sure it hits the center of that piece we drilled. Then I'll rotate it with my fingers. I can, okay, I feel it biting right there. See, I can't turn it. The extractor's not turning. Take my pliers, push in on it. Not crazy hard now, but you just want to put a little bit of pressure on it. I rotate the screw extractor until you feel it biting. And pull. Up. Oh, see, look, didn't work. So what probably happened, okay, if you guys remember what I said at the beginning of the video, screw extractors are turned the wrong way. But I've seen some of the forums and Facebook groups where people say, so use this screw extractor to get it out. But to be honest with you, the screw extractor actually turns it the wrong way. 
but I just want to do it for the show of demonstration as to what happens when this thing's in the wrong place. So now we're going to go to the 564 drill bit. Get that up inside there, get it centered. And you're going to push and turn because drill bit cuts this way. Go push. And I can feel that rotating side there, it's biting. Okay, so now at this point, see if we get lucky enough to pull it out. Don't snatch it. You just want to gently pull. Look at that. Popped right out of there, baby. And it didn't damage my switch or anything. So, stick it back up in just one more time for the fun of it. Let's see. It's up inside there. Let's see if we get lucky enough to fill the drill bit is biting and kind of what you feel especially if you do it with your fingers especially if you do it with your fingers because if you look at your positioning on your stalk whenever you rotate okay here's where it's centered this is where that pin is lined up with that slot inside there as I noted you guys as I showed you guys earlier on my column in the 91 model when you go like this you put it in the missed position and it'll bounce back because this is only a momentary action here here's zeroed out wipers are off no nothing okay use bump it back straight here but the spring inside the switch pushes it back to zero automatically so whenever you're taking your bit and you push and you rotate it toward that direction you can feel that spring action inside that switch and you can feel it spring right back to center lining that tab lining that tab up with that slot inside the switch see works just perfect now let's put the good one back in my driver now that we're through the demonstration put it in there be sure that flat spot lines up with that groove you what you want to do is I'm pushing in that way and rotate a little bit you'll feel that notchiness where it catches that groove I'm right there I caught the groove push up like that slides right in now we got the sleeve we got to line up rotate the sleeve till the notches line up see the sleeve we got a gap here oh yeah we're good take your thumb you're done did you guys learn a little something about that video if you did hit me with that thumbs up subscribe if you haven't leave me some cool comments down below now remember whenever you're drilling that piece right there you want to push hard enough that the drill bit cuts but not too hard that you can that one break the bit or slip off and end up drilling through your switch and damaging the switch. Then you gotta pull the steering column, replace the switch, and this piece right here. So it runs into more money. Take your time as you're drilling the hole and easily cut its way through. So as long as you be patient, take your time, you'll get it done just fine. Hey, it rhymed. There might be a rapper next. Yeah. All right, everyone. Appreciate you hanging out. Peace out. Later, y'all.